Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back. Today's Bible reading is for August 31st. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, may you bless this reading, give us discernment, fill us with your Holy Spirit, Lord God, and may we put you first always in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The book of Job, chapter 37, verse 1, through chapter 39, verse 30. At this also my Elihu's heart trembles and leaps from its place. Hear attentively the thunder of his voice and the rumbling that comes from his mouth. He sends it forth under the whole heaven, his lightning to the ends of the earth. After it a voice roars. He thunders with his majestic voice, and he does not restrain them. When his voice is heard, God thunders marvelously with his voice. He does great things which we cannot comprehend. For he says to the snow, fall on the earth. Likewise to the gentle rain and the heavy rain of his strength. He seals the hand of every man that all men may know his work. The beasts go into dens and remain in their lairs. From the chamber of the south comes the whirlwind, and cold from the scattering winds of the north. By the breath of God, ice is given, and the broad waters are frozen. Also with moisture, he saturates the thick clouds. He scatters his bright clouds, and they swirl about, being turned by his guidance, that they may do whatever he commands them on the face of the whole earth. He causes it to come, whether for correction, or for his land, or for mercy. Listen to this, O Job. Stand still and consider the wondrous works of God. Do you know when God dispatches them and causes the light of his cloud to shine? Do you know how the clouds are balanced, those wondrous works of him who is perfect in knowledge? Why are your garments hot when he quiets the earth by the south wind? With him have you spread out the skies, strong as a cast metal mirror? Teach us what we should say to him, for we can prepare nothing because of the darkness. Should he be told that I wish to speak? If a man were to speak, Surely he would be swallowed up. Even now men cannot look at the light when it is bright in the skies. When the wind has passed and, cl and cleared them, he comes from the north as golden splendor. With God is awesome majesty. As for the Almighty, we cannot find him. He is excellent in power, in judgment and abundant justice. He does not oppress. Therefore men fear him. He shows no partiality to any who are wise of heart. Then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind and said, Who is this who darkens counsel by words without knowledge? Now prepare yourself like a man. I will question you and you shall answer me. Where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? Tell me, if you have understanding. Who determined its measurements? Surely you know. Or who stretched the line upon it? To what were its foundations fastened? Or who laid its cornerstone when the morning stars sang together? And all the sons of God shouted for joy. Or who shut in the sea with doors when it burst forth and issued from the womb? When I made the clouds its garment and thick darkness its swaddling band. When I fixed my limit for it and set bars and doors. When I said, this far you may come, but no farther. And here your proud waves must stop. 
Have you commanded the morning since your days began, and caused the dawn to know its place, that it might take hold of the ends of the earth, and the wicked be shaken out of it? It takes on its form like clay under a seal, and stands out like a garment. From the wicked their light is withheld, and the upraised arm is broken. Have you entered the springs of the sea? Or have you walked in search of the depths? Have the gates of death been revealed to you? Or have you seen the doors of the shadow of death? Have you comprehended the breadth of the earth? Tell me, if you know all this, where is the way to the dwelling of light and darkness? Where is its place that you may take it to its territory? that you may know the paths to its home. Do you know it? Because you were born then, or because the number of your days is great. Have you entered the treasury of snow, or have you seen the treasury of hail, which I have reserved for the time of trouble, for the day of battle and war? By what way is light diffused, or the east wind scattered over the earth? Who has divided a channel for the overflowing water, or a path for the thunderbolt, to cause it to rain on a land where there is no one, a wilderness in which there is no man, to satisfy the desolate waste, and cause to spring forth the growth of tender grass? Has the rain a father, or who has begotten the drops of dew? From whose womb comes the ice, and the frost of heaven, who gives its birth? The waters harden like stone, and the surface of the deep is frozen. Can you bind the cluster of the Pleiades, Pleiades, or loose the belt of Orion? Can you bring out Maseroth in its season, or can you guide the great bear with its cubs? Do you know the ordinances of the heavens? Can you set their dominion over the earth? Can you lift up your voice to the clouds that an abundance of water may cover you? Can you send out lightnings that they may go and say to you, Here we are? Who has put wisdom in the mind? Or who has given understanding to the heart? Who can number the clouds by wisdom? Or who can pour out the bottles of heaven? when the dust hardens in clumps and the clogs cling together? Can you hunt the prey for the lion or satisfy the appetite of the young lions when they crouch in their dens or lurk in their lairs to lie in wait? Who provides food for the raven when its young ones cry to God and wander about for lack of food? Do you know the time when the wild mountain goats bear young? Or can you mark when the deer gives birth? Can you number the months that they fulfill? Or do you know the time when they bear young? They bow down. They bring forth their young. They deliver their offspring. Their young ones are healthy. They grow strong with grain. They depart and do not return to them. Who set the wild donkey free? Who loosed the bonds of the honor honor excuse me for whose home I have made the wilderness and the barren land his dwelling? He scorns the tumult of the city, he does not heed the shouts of the driver. The range of the mountains is his pasture, and he searches after every green thing. Will the wild ox be willing to serve you? Will he bed by your manger? Can you bind the wild oxen in the furrow with ropes? Or will he plow the valleys behind you? Will you trust him because his, great, his strength is great? Or will you leave your labor to him? Will you trust him to bring home your grain and gather it to your threshing floor? The wings of the ostrich wave proudly. But are her wings and pinions like the kindly storks? 
for she leaves her eggs on the ground and warms them in the dust. She forgets that a foot may crush them, or that, or that a wild beast may break them. She treats her young harshly, as though they were not hers. Her labor is in vain, without concern, because God deprived her of wisdom and did not endow her with understanding. When she lifts herself on high, she scorns the horse and its rider. Have you given the horse strength? Have you clothed his neck with thunder? Can you frighten him like a locust? His majestic snorting strikes terror. He paws in the valley and rejoices in his strength. He gallops into the clash of arms. He mocks at fear and is not frightened. Nor does he turn back from the sword. The quiver rattles against him, the glittering spear and javelin. He devours the distance with fierceness and rage. Nor does he come to a halt because the trumpet has sounded. At the blast of the trumpet, he says, Aha! He smells the battle from afar, the thunder of captains and shouting. Does the hawk fly by your wisdom and spread its wings toward the south? Does the eagle mount up at your command and make its nest on high? On the rock it dwells and resides, on the crag of the rock and the stronghold. From there it spies out the prey, its eyes observe from afar. Its young ones suck up blood, and where the slain are, there it is. The book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 4, verse 13, through chapter 5, verse 10. And since we have the same spirit of faith, according to what is written, I believed and therefore I spoke, we also believe and therefore speak, knowing that that he who raised up the Lord Jesus will also raise us up with Jesus and will present us with you. For all things are for your sakes, that grace, having spread through the many, may cause thanksgiving to abound to the glory of God. Therefore we do not lose heart, even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory, while we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. For we know that if our earthly house, this tent, is destroyed. We have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan, earnestly desiring to be clothed with our habitation which is from heaven. If indeed, having been clothed, we shall not be found naked. For we who are in this tent groan, being burdened, not because we want to be unclothed, but further clothed, that mortality may be swallowed up by life. Now he who has prepared us for this very thing is God, who also has given us the Spirit as a guarantee. So we are always confident, knowing that while we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord, for we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, yes, well pleased rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Therefore we make it our aim, whether present or absent, to be well pleasing to Him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one may receive the things done in the body 
according to what he has done, whether good or bad. The book of Psalm, chapter 44, verses 9 through 26. But you have cast us off and put us to shame. And you do not go out with our armies. You make us turn back from the enemy, and those who hate us have taken spoil for themselves. You have given us up like sheep intended for food, and have scattered us among the nations. You sell your people for next to nothing and are not enriched by selling them. You make us a reproach to our neighbors, a scorn and a derision to those all around us. You make us a byword among the nations, a shaking of the head among the peoples. My dishonor is continually before me, and the shame of my face has covered me. Because of the voice of him who reproaches and reviles, because of the enemy and the avenger. All this has come upon us, but we have not forgotten you, nor have we dealt falsely with your covenant. Our heart has not turned back, nor have our steps departed from your way, but you have severely broken us in the place of jackals and covered us with the shadow of death. If we had forgotten the name of our God, or stretched out our hands to a foreign god, would not God search this out? For he knows the secrets of the heart, yet for your sake we are killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Awake! Why do you sleep, O Lord? Arise! Do not cast us off forever. Why do you hide your face and forget our affliction and our oppression? For our soul is bowed down to the dust, our body clings to the ground. Arise for our help, and redeem us for your mercy's sake. The book of Proverbs, chapter 22, verse 13. The lazy man says, there is a lion outside. I shall be slain in the streets. Hope you guys have a great night. May God bless you all. Peace.